John chapter 13, I know that I, I've dealt with uh, this first part. Let me get through here in my notes. Uh, did that, we did that, we did that, we did that, we did that. Wait a minute. See, that's, there's something wrong here. Because some of my notes are not, my notes are not getting through. And I don't know what the deal is. John, how many, um, how many uh, PowerPoint slides do you have? I've got nine showing up and I know. Huh? Huh? Yeah, I yeah, something ain't right. Yeah, hang on a second. What day is the day? I know it's not August. Nine seven. See, it's not it's not showing up there. Wednesday night study sermons. Nine seven, maybe that does it. Well, I don't know what to do now because I had good notes too, and I don't have. Any of them. Huh? Well, I don't. That's the thing. I don't have Dropbox on this one. So I have the OneDrive. And I thought. Give me one minute. Roy's going to entertain you while I'm on. So give me one minute. Go ahead, Roy. Come up here. Well, how did he do? Did Roy entertain you well? Huh? Was it? Spent? Yeah. Bet it was just fantastic, huh? I can't believe this. No. No. Not 
there. No, not there. This is not, this is unbelievable. It's not right. It's not right. All right. Well, let me, um, let me do this then. Uh, take your Bible, if you would. We're going to do it this way. And um, we're going to read some scriptures. And uh, then we'll study the Bible a little bit. He's covering up the camera for some reason. Uh, take your Bible, if you would, turn to Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. Uh, God has a reason for everything. And um, I guess I'm going to have to work on this computer. I'm going to have to take it home work on it. Matthew chapter 18, <clears throat> and um, let's start in verse 7, and um, but let's go to the Lord in prayer first before we do anything else, ask God's blessing, uh, because I do have a pretty serious thing to talk with everybody about tonight. Father in heaven, we do love you. We thank you, God, for giving us this day. We thank you, Lord, uh, for all things, good and bad. Father, the, the bad things teach us. The good things give us reason to rejoice. And Lord, all things that are done are done by your will and your power. And help us, Father, to remember that. Lord, as we go about our lives and go about the things that we handle every day and the issues, Lord, that we face. Help us to understand the world that we live in, that, Lord, there are people, Lord, who are willing to serve the Lord. There are people who are not willing to serve the Lord. And I pray, dear God, that you would always give us discretion and help us, Father, to be the ones who are always willing to serve you. We ask your blessings tonight on your word. We pray in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 18 and verse... Uh, seven. I tell you what I'll do is I'll make the um, I'll make the uh, the verses there on the screen just a little bit bigger for you because actually I'm making them bigger for me. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I got to where that twelve point font wasn't quite big enough for me. So there we go. That's better. So Matthew uh, chapter 18, and he says in verse 7, Woe unto the world because of offenses. For it must needs be that offenses come. Now he's talking about sins. He's talking about things that people do that offend us. Uh, it, it, it offends me. It bothers me. Uh, to see a man dressed up like a woman who gets the right to go into a woman's bathroom. It offends me when a man decides that he is a woman and he competes against women in women's sports events and wins. That offends me. Uh, but he's also talking about things that are, that are sin as well. So he says in verse 8, Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee, it is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye, rather than having two eyes to be cast into 
hell fire. Now, does he really mean what he says here? And let me tell you this, some of this story you've probably heard. They made a movie about it. This guy was walking through the Moab desert. And there's a lot of canyons out there. And there's a lot of places for people to walk and hike. And, and this guy was going to go through this real very narrow canyon. And he had plenty of water. He had plenty of uh, snacks and on hand and everything like that. He's walking through this canyon. And I mean, it's very narrow. It's just about enough for a man to walk through. And that's it. While he's walking through this canyon, a big stone came rolling down that canyon and trapped his arm up against the side of the canyon wall. And he's stuck. He didn't tell, he's single, he's not married, he doesn't, he doesn't tell anybody where he's going. Nobody knows where he is. For days, nobody knows where he is. And for days, he's stuck with his arm up against, jammed between this big rock and the side of this, of this cliff. And he has to stand there for days. I can't remember, like five or six days, he's got to stand there. Uh, he ends up drinking his own urine to survive. And at some point, he's got, all he's got is a little, one of those little utility pocket knives. And he's trying to break the rock up with this knife. And it's just not breaking it, but he's trying for days and days and days. He's not getting any sleep. And at one point, he ends up running that knife into his thumb. And the smell that came from there told him that that flesh was dead. And what that told him was, I'm going to be dead and not too long. His only way out was to take that knife. He wrapped a tourniquet around his arm. And he began to cut the flesh off of what he could of his arm. He ended up breaking both bones here sawing the meat off and he said that wasn't the bad part the bad part was he got down to the last two nerves and he said i just touched the nerve with that knife and he said just shocks of pain went running through him but finally he got up the nerve to cut those nerves he bandaged his arm up the best he could. He had to walk back out the way he came, lower himself down a rope that he had climbed up to get there, and finally somebody found him. And he's alive today because of that. What had happened was his right hand offended him and did he cut it off? Yes, in order to save the rest of the body. Does that sound reasonable to you? So let's, let's say that there is a rot in our church. Someone or a group of people who are sinning and continue in that sin and planning evil. It's happened before. In order to protect the body of this church, something's got to be cut off. Do you understand that? Okay, 
Um, so he said in verse 10, uh, take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones, talking about children. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father, which is in heaven. Uh, I went too far there. Um, and he said, How think ye, a man have a hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray? Doth he not leave the ninety and nine, and goeth into the mountains, and seeketh that which is gone astray? And if so be he, he find it, verily I say unto you, he rejoiceth more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine which went not astray. Even so, it is not the will of your Father which is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. Now, verse 15. This is Christ giving us the example of how to deal with sins, transgressions that you know are in somebody's life. Believe it or not, I've had people in this church confront me about a certain sin and they were right about it. And I confessed it to them and we prayed and God forgave and it was over with never been brought up ever again not even with the person who had to come to me even pastors are under this rule but here's the rule moreover if thy brother shall trespass against thee what is a trespass what is a trespass an offense, a trespass. If you read the word trespass all through the Bible, you'll find out that we are dead through trespasses and sins. A trespass is a sin. If thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Uh, take your Bible, turn to Galatians. If you would, Galatians, I believe, chapter 6. Let's see here. That's still Ephesians. I'm still in Ephesians, Galatians. Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, so let's say that, let's say that I was um, in town and uh, eating at a restaurant and I happen to see somebody in the church some man in the church eating dinner with a, a woman that obviously was not his wife number one that doesn't look good does it and so it's my responsibility to go to that person brethren if a man be overtaken in a fault ye which are spiritual do what Hang them, shoot them, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. So it's the same. Here's the second witness to what is being mentioned here in Matthew chapter 18. Uh, Brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. 
he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. So, if I go to this person that I saw at Applebee's or wherever, and I say to them, I saw you with another woman, um, and you lie to me and say, well, that was, that was my sister. I mean, I could easily find out whether that was your sister or not. But if you admit to me and say, Pastor Mike, you're right. Um, I got caught. There's no way out of it. And I don't want it to ruin my marriage. I don't want it to ruin my relationship with God nor my testimony. Pastor Mike, will you pray with me that I can be forgiven of this and that God would help me to break this off, to stay faithful and true to my wife? I'll do that in a heartbeat. And it's gone just like that. It's over with. Nobody has to know about it. It doesn't have to be announced in the church bulletin. We don't bring them up in front of the church and nothing. It's over with. But let's say that the person says, um, that wasn't me or that, that, was, that, was just, uh, that was my sister that was there and... I mean, I happen to know your family, and I know it's not your sister. So, we have a conversation, and it doesn't go well, and you don't repent. And I have to bring a second witness, someone who knows your family, someone who is a believer, someone who knows who the person was. And they have also seen you at other places with this person. Then we have to, we still have to try to bring you back. Which one of us can get caught up in sin? And that's the point. Any one of us can be that person. Any one of us. And so, verse 16, But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. Verse 17, If he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. And I want you to look at verse 18. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. At that point, having brought it before the church, there's even rules concerning that, that you have to select men in the church who are not of any stature and they act as judges and it's just like a little trial. I preached on this here not too long ago and I, I begged this church don't ever put me in a situation where I have to do this. Don't ever do it. Um, so that's the rules. It's the rules that all of us must follow. And no one's exempt from it. Now I want you to take the Bible and turn to 1 Corinthians 5, if you would, please. 1 Corinthians 5. I think I know what's wrong with my computer now. It's 
it's not connected to the Wi-Fi. Well, actually, it is connected to the Wi-Fi, but because everybody else here is connected to the Wi-Fi, I don't get any Wi-Fi. I just thought I'd let you know. First Corinthians uh, chapter 5. Let me, and I've said this before, but let me ask you again. Is fornication a very big problem in our country? It's a huge problem. And just like in the Old Testament days, every man did that which was right in their own eyes. First Corinthians chapter 5, let's read this together. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you. And such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. Now that was actually, if you read the law, if you go back and actually read the law, and I would encourage you to do that. There's profound wisdom in God's law. But a man was not allowed to... Um, sleep with his father's wife. Not necessarily his mother. Of course, that's gross anyway. But if his father had a wife that wasn't necessarily your mother, uh, you were not allowed to sleep with her because you are uncovering your father's nakedness. That's the same uh, issue that got Ham in trouble. He uncovered, uncovered his father's nakedness. But anyway, that one should have his father's wife. Now what happened was, this was going on in the church, and the church was allowing it to continue. And he said, and you are puffed up. You had the wedding. Or whatever. And have not rather mourned that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. For verily, as absent in the body but present in spirit, have, have uh, judged already as though I were present concerning him that hath done, so done this deed. Paul's going to pronounce sentence now as if he were there. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you're gathered together and my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ... You are to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. In other words, turn them over. Let the devil have them for a while and let the devil just be cruel and mean and harsh. Turn them over. Do exactly what God did with Israel all through the book of Judges. Turn them over to cruel authority. Because under cruel authority, people start saying, I don't like this anymore. Uh, listen, people, if our nation has to be on track for cruel authority at some point. It's coming. Um, verse 6, your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. So he said, if you let one person do it, what does that say to the rest of the church? Must be okay. Uh, purge out, verse 7. Purge out therefore the old leaven that ye may be a new lump as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast not with the old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators. 
Yet not altogether with fornicators of this world or with covetous or extortioners or with idolaters. For then must ye needs go out of the world. But um, now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is a br called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner. With such an one, no, not to eat. And what he means by no, not to eat is not to have the Lord's Supper with them. They're not qualified. Um, verse 12, for what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within? But them that are without, God judgeth. Therefore, put away from among yourselves that wicked person. Um, I want us to have a word of prayer. And I'm going to ask John to cut the feed. And I'm going to run something by everybody. Father, I ask God that your Holy Spirit would lead and guide us. Lord, that you would help us and give us understanding from your word. And Father, the sin, sin has no face. Because sin can reside inside of any body. So whether it's somebody we know or somebody we like or somebody that we're good friends with or somebody uh, that we don't like, Father, help us to understand that sin happens to everybody and what's possible in one person could just as easily be possible in us. But Father, I know my own life. And I know, Father, what you have saved me out of. What you have chastised me over. What to this day you still bring stripes to my back. So, Father, we beg you, dear God, Lord, that you would give us a, a spirit of understanding give us the spirit of wisdom to know how to handle Lord the situation that is before us we ask your blessings we thank you Lord for your word tonight we pray these in Jesus name and all of God's people said amen I'm